Uh, this is the World Cain Church of Christ in Alma, Texas. This is November the 12th, 2023. Sunday evening message, final part five, the final part two. Our message, traditions of men cannot override the righteousness of God. The traditions of men cannot override the righteousness of God. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 through 3, that we have all things that pertain to life and godliness. Uh, your life, how you live, the people you associate with, the people you be around for worship, and the life that you live. When Ruth transplanted over to Israel, there's a lot of sinners in Israel, but she knows that the people of God are over there. And she didn't run to the people of God every day of her life. She's going to see all manner of people on the earth that say they're saints, but not, excuse me, not living right. But nevertheless, she knows that's where her husband came from. That's where her mother-in-law came from, and they seem to be upright people. So she knows that's who I want to be with. You're going to always be surrounded by sinners. First Corinthians 5, Paul tells you, don't run from them. You're going to be around. If there's a saint that's living sinful after you've admonished them a few times and you've talked to them, then you withdraw. So we got to keep that thing right because we are light. In the midst of darkness. And that's where Christ came out. Out of darkness. Not that he was in darkness. He came out of darkness. A shining bright light. Out of a very ugly place. Galilee. And lit up the whole world. And so that's how you and I want to be. We light up dark. We don't light up light. We light up darkness. And so that's what you have to understand. So you have to maintain yourself. Don't get involved with something that you're weak to. But at the same time, realize you're going to be around sinners. They cannot hurt you. They will. They cannot change your faith unless you believe what they believe. You don't want to be around people killing and hurting. We understand it. But we're talking about people living obscure lifestyles and darkness. That's who you're going to be around. That's your vineyard. The vineyard you're working on is where the sinners are at, brother. You know, the, that, when you come to worship, you hope everybody going to walk upright. Sometimes we think the vineyard is to be working on the saints. That's one group. But there's a vineyard you have to work in where you go and you now are plowing and plowing and breaking ground. And that's the heart of the wicked. That man planted seed in soil. He didn't plant seed in Seed, he planted seed in soil. So the saw the people's hearts. So you got to go where the seed needs to be planted. Jesus said clearly that he ate among sinners and publicans because that's where the sick people are. So let's remember that and encourage each other. Now let's look at Ruth chapter 3 as we're going to wrap this up here. Uh, part 5, the final part. Ruth chapter number 3. And we're going to deal with this uh, once again. This is the final installment. And what we're talking about, brethren, is the understanding is righteousness is for an individual to go beyond traditions and do what is right in God's eyesight. Ruth is a Moabite. Her people have a history of getting Israel destroyed. Naomi is an Israelite. Her people have the history of leading the world in righteousness. But now she's looking out for her Moabite daughter-in-law who needs a husband because she wants one. She's not making her get married. She's not, she's helping her. She wants a husband. And one thing we had, a, the wonderful thing about the Bible discussion this morning was a thought came up about how to raise the daughters. And we were emphasizing the daughter must be taught. You need Christ. You don't need a man. The daughter must be taught. You have to learn how to feed yourself. The daughter must be taught. You have to be independent. And we also didn't get to, but Paul advises in 1 Corinthians 7, it's better if a man teaches his daughter, don't get mad. Stay single and work for the Lord. Do work at the Lord and, you know, prosper in your life. And he says he does better than giving the one that gives his daughter away. He says not a sin giving a daughter away, but the one that encourages her not to get married, provided she can't contain, he does better. So the option is you got two people that can't contain, but one wants to get married. The other one doesn't. 
And the idea, you tell, okay, you stay, you continue to stay single because you'll be undistracted in the work of the law. Now, that's the book, and that's the advice given, not a commandment. And so we understand that. So this is how, speaking of the daughter, which was the topic, and that's what Paul's talking about, the daughter, that's how it's to be done. Now, here goes the flip to understand if in life you are lonely, struggling, you are burning with passion, like just a burning, I've got to have a man. Well, don't go sleeping around, you marry. Even if your spouse dies, there's no sin and you wanting another man and there's no time frame for you to get married again. The idea is that Paul advises to the widows who are young, 1 Timothy 5, to marry. So he's not speaking against marriage. He's telling Timothy, tell them to get married. So the idea is, so what's the gist of it concerning this woman, uh, Ruth? The thought is, is that People sometimes get bit out of shape at the independence of women. That's what you're supposed to teach your daughters. You don't need a man, you need Jesus. When we say you need a man, it's because you have those frailties of desire to be with the opposite sex, to just have somebody wake up beside you and eat breakfast with in the morning because you don't want to be alone. Uh, whether you want children or not, if you do, you can't have it by yourself. So the idea is that if you're struggling financially, so I said, is it a good reason for a woman to get married because life is tough financially? Yes. That's what Paul is telling. These women want to be put on the list of financial support of the church because their husbands die. And he said, tell those widows that that's going to be a temporary. How do we know? Because he says, instruct them you to get married. That means they're going to be counsel. So is that right? Yeah, because I'm struggling financially. So we talked about those areas a little bit in the study. Brother Keith did an excellent job in, in allowing that study to flow. So we want to tell you is that both sides are right. It depends on what the person wants to do. But you never need nobody other than Jesus. That needs to be understood. And Christ will give you what you want and what you need. So then you get down to the breakdowns of what you should want and need. Sometimes men get bent out of shape when women are independent. And they may tell you, you know, if I pick you, it'll be because I want you because I don't need a man. Well, you don't need to get bent out of shape. You might end up losing a good woman, acting crazy, getting stiff-necked. But the idea is that's how Christians are supposed to be raised. To understand why we're picking on the women's side because women are to be taken note of and helped according to the gospel. The fatherless, the widow. That's what the Bible talks about. Israel forgot about God is sensitive Toward the female, especially those that are his daughters by faith. He is sensitive and he wants them to be careful, but not at the expense of on the church. He wants them to get a man. Now, so that's the teach. So you got one side say you want to serve the law, you have to work, serve the law. You want to serve the law, but in the capacity of a married woman, you gotta get a man. But nobody's gonna allow sex. On the side and not be married. That's that's never going to be God. Thing. Anybody talking like that. You need to go on down the street. Because you don't know nothing about Jesus. Nothing at all. The Lord has never approved a promiscuous foolishness like that. So let's look at Ruth chapter number 3. Verse 1. Then Naomi her mother-in-law said unto her. My daughter. Look how she refers to her. Shall I not seek rest for thee? What type of rest is that? She don't know how to get in the bed? No. That it may be well with thee. The rest is a man. Looking out for you. And now is not Boaz. Of our kindred. With whose maidens thou was. Behold he went up barley tonight. In a dresser full. Once she heard. Boaz who he worked. She worked for that day. Once she heard how he treated her. Boaz makes no move towards her. He's going to say why. He's going to tell her. I thought you would want a young man. That's why I ain't make no move towards you. I told a young man don't be bothering you. But he still knows if a young man approach you properly. That's what I thought you want. He don't make any move. Uh, Naomi is saying. I'm going to hook you up with Boaz. I'm going to tell you how. Because they have been talking. And she obviously wants a husband. So she's not in that category anymore. I want to be independent. I want to be almost. No, she, she's in the I want a man category. And so it says, wash thyself therefore and anoint thee and put thy raiment upon thee. She didn't say go down naked. She didn't say, girl, sow some flesh. Did you know that? Sow some flesh, baby. Let him see something. No. Put thy raiment. Put some clothes on. Get thee down to the floor. But make Thou not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. So you go, you go where he at. You know the area he in. Don't bother him till he get through eating. 
and drinking. He gonna be relaxed. Now she's telling her how to get this man. And that's what a mother or a mother-in-law that has come close to the daughter who, whose husband uh, has died. Sometimes some women's sons are so trifling when they get a divorce from their wicked son, they will hook them up with another man. And they'll tell you, babe, I told you he wasn't no good. He my son, but he ain't no good. And they will. And they'll tell him, well, you wasn't no good for her. Yeah, I sure did. Go there, and you better leave her alone. See, some mothers know their kids no good. That's the way it is. And they're honest, transparent about it. And they'll let them know. So, you know, but it depends on how close you get to that person. Verse 4, and it shall be when he lie down, that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. And thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down. And he will tell thee what thou shalt do. This is a custom, obviously. Because she said he will tell you what you do. Because he's going to know. Nobody going to come and uncover my feet and lay by me unless they know this is the signal. See, because this is done in secret. Watch how it's done in secret. Verse 5. And she said unto her, all that thou says unto me, I will do. If, if your mother or your mother-in-law who you're close to because the spouse is gone or something happened, tells you something to do along the lines and it doesn't violate God, you need to do that. You need to do that. And she tell you, you she, she said, okay, yeah, he'll be a good match for you. you. You like him? Okay, look, let me tell you what to do. When you go up, when he at the store, you go up there and you tell him, hey, how you doing? My name's Sonson. You know I work for you. Hey, I want to know, why you have never asked me out? If she tell you that, you need to do that. Don't worry, I'm just going to stand by. He ain't gonna, he's not going to ask you nothing because she done told you what to do. So you got to watch what you do. Some people you know, well, I'm going to let him know it's me. Keep on. You'll be, you'll be old and gray and unmarried. You don't know what you're doing. If that woman tells y'all know how this person functions, you need to do this. You can do that. And this is how she's going to get a good man, rich and righteous and well-known and prominent in the community. He's still not married. Obviously, he's choosy. Don't want know anybody. He's still not married. Okay, so look what happens. Uh, he says, and she went down to the floor and did a call in verse 6 to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when boy, and remember, she's from another land. So this thing you got to understand too. Now we got to watch this. We're going to make sure we get this right. If you from another land, you go to a new land and you got somebody that know the people there, you have to do what they tell you. If they're your trusted person, you know, whatever they tell you. If they tell you, okay, when you do that, uh, you got to bring her 16 flowers, all different colors. You better do what he tell you. You want to get that woman or that man, whatever it is, because they know that land. You know, I'm not going to do all that. Well, then you don't want one of them people from that land because she's in a new land. They don't, if, if she didn't go, yeah, that's what we do in Moab. She don't know nothing about that. Uncovering nobody's feet doing that. She didn't go, we know that already. <laughs> and that's another thing you got to watch when people telling you something. Don't talk to them like that. I already know that. They're trying to help you to get the person you need in your life. You always want to listen. Just live. You already knew it. Just let it go in. Just go, uh -huh. tell, you, tell you something you don't know. That's wisdom. And they will tell you how to achieve what you're trying to do. And so when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. And she came softly and covered his feet. She ain't yanked the covers off his feet softly and laid her down. Came to pass at midnight. That the man was afraid and turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And when and he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near killer. So, okay, you're supposed to take what you have and throw over her. That's how it's done. And she and he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter. For thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning. Insomuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. See, notice that. Now, he's all up to be, she calling daughter. We got an age gap here. We don't know how far, but it's an age gap, a, par a parental age gap. Nevertheless, he knows you could have picked a young, rich, or poor man. That's the key, youth. Showing she's, she's young. Not underage, but young. Because she did get married. And now, my daughter, fear not. 
I will do to thee all that thou requires. For all the city of my people don't know that thou art a virtuous woman. Now, Brother Frizz read us that earlier. Now, see, she's called a virtuous woman, but she's not a Jew. Notice the understanding. You know, you have been sleeping around. You're not like them wild Moabite girls trying to get Jewish young men to worship your God. You're a virtual. Everybody knows you're in, in the community. But he knows there are other rich men. See, he's one rich man, but there are other rich men that are young. They got fields too. She could have picked any one of them and still been a virtuous one. But he says, man, you, you show more kindness at the end, at the end, than in the beginning. Man, you really, you really showing appreciation to me. I don't think, I think one of the problems here we have to understand in understanding this lesson. Ruth, as we point out in another lesson, knows what it's like to be a widow with no children. She knows what it's like to be a widow, period. She knows what it's like to be a broke person with no man or children. No males, at least. She doesn't want that for Ruth. Naomi knows that. Naomi knows this feel. Naomi knows, I know I feel. Ruth knows how it is to be a widow, but she's not old. So she doesn't know that trouble. She does know what it is to be a widow with no kids, but she's still young. What is the value that when she's young, some men want a woman that can give them kids. That's, that's their thing. Some men just want a good woman. So the idea she knows, okay, well, either way it go, I know the odds are better for me in this category. That I can't give them a child. So I'm still young. Uh, so my life is still before me. So all these things have to be considered to understand the lesson. So now we look at uh, verse 12. And now it is true that I am not near kinsman. How be it? There is a kinsman nearer than I. Look at the honesty of this guy. This dude. Is, man, boy, is such a good dude. He's just. He, he treats people fair. You got to work understood. He looks out for those that are weak or the female especially. And he knows I could just go ahead and make my move. But no, I know the family. And it's a cousin closer to them than me. Yeah, that's why we say things. First cousin, second cousin, third cousin. We know, okay, this one closer to me. How be it, Naomi doesn't know that. She didn't know that. But look at his honesty. You know, no, I'm not going to do this. Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning, that if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, well. He says, if he wants you, it's good. He's saying, I'll back off. Let him do the kinsman part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of a kinsman to thee. As the Lord liveth, lie down until the morning. He says, okay. Now, now watch what's going to have verse 14. And she lay at his feet until the morning, and she rose up before one could know another. And he said, let it be not known that a woman came into the floor. Now, is Naomi trying to set her up to discredit her name? No. But Naomi knows you want to sneak in and get him. Because she knows this man is wanted. And it's going to be so long, he's going to be on the table. Because this women going to come out there. Oh, man, it's a good dude and he got money too. Man, he's righteous. He do things right. So she said, you got to go in there because it's not supposed to be a woman on the floor. Did you hear what he said? But Naomi knows you got to go when everybody knocked out to sleep. They done drank, they done ate, they feeling good. And you got to go in there, uncover his feet, lay by. He going to know. Somebody told you go do this. Okay. All right. Naomi hooking it up. Okay, so good. So we got to do it right though. But we don't want your name to be messed up. So you got to get on out of here before everybody wake up. Because it could be he had some old girl laying with him. It was Ruth. She's not virtuous as we thought. He's trying to protect her image and her name. That's why men need to handle their business right. When you're dating women, don't you ruin this woman's name because of your nastiness. You're the leader. You want to have sex. You're nasty. That's the problem. You're nasty. And don't mess up people's name. You should be a man. Real men are men. It's a real man. You know, I'm not going to touch you. And I don't want nobody even seeing you around here. You don't be dragging no woman out your house no five or six, four, five in the morning. And you talk about, you know what, well, you know, I'm kind of tired. You just say, get up and drive her or take her or ride with her, whatever you got to do. And then you come back there because you're messing her name up. You know, understand that. Be a man. And so this is what this man is doing. He's teaching us to be a man. And so we have to adhere to that. And so what happens is uh, she gets on out of there. 
And uh, verse 15 also he said, bring the veil that thou hast upon thee and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley and laid it unto her and she went into the city. So he said, okay, he said, open your veil. Look at the general, open your veil. Let me put some food now for y'all. Look out for y'all. You know, go ahead. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, who art thou, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, the six measures of barley gave he me. For he said to me, go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. You know, read no Naomi setting this up. So he says, don't go to, uh, you bring her a gift, man. Uh, I appreciate this, man. I appreciate how she doing. Bring her this gift. See, now you may think there's nothing getting this food. Let me tell you something. When you broke and you don't have nothing to eat, that's like if somebody give you some groceries from Kroger's or H-E-B. And he told you to take their groceries. He going to look, boy, that's so nice, him. He looking out for family. Man, let me tell you something. I don't know if y'all have ever been hungry. I, I've been in them times before. And I ain't talking about being my parents and my because they had what we needed. It's talking about me as a man. So you'd be glad to get food. Because you have to understand, man, times can get tight. And you may, nobody may talk about it, but it's real. You may not have the spirit. Thank God. I don't want you to. But some have. So you have to understand that. You know, you have to ask and you get stuff and you're glad you got it. Thank God. And so you look at it, it says here in uh, verse 18. Then said she, sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he had finished the thing this day. She said, boy, it's going to take her that care of that today. If he did all that, he going to take care of it. He not going to get no rest. There ain't going to be no next week. I'm busy with work. Man, it's going to be today. You know, that's a young, good looking woman. A young, whatever she looked like. Man, look here. She's prime target for these guys. Virtuous too. I got it. I'm going to go to the near kinsman. Chapter 4. Then went Boaz up to the gate and sat him down there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz came by unto him, he said, watch, watch, how, watch how kinfolk know when other kinfolk doing real good. Oh, such a one. Turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside, aside. He said, he came up. That boy, hey, oh, look out. There you go. Come on, man. You the one. Come on, sit down. What's up, cuz? You know, man, you've been doing, you're doing good. Such a one. You come around me, man. That's how you greet cuz. You know, successful life is going well for them. He says, he took 10 men of the elders of the city and said, sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that is, come again out of the country. Moab set up a parcel of land. Now watch what he says. Naomi set up a parcel of land, which was our brother Elimelech's. Now watch how he's going to set this up. And I thought to advise thee, saying, buy it before the inhabitants and before those of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it beside thee. And I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Now watch what happens. Then said Boaz, what day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself. He said, oh, oh, I can't do that. Lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself. For now I, can, I cannot redeem. So, you know, I got an inheritance I'm supposed to get from, from my direct folks. Oh, you say, well, whoa, whoa. Ruth. No, it's a, 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 a woman involved in the deal. I'm not going to be able to do that because if I do that, she involved, that's going to blow my inheritance. I'm not going to be able to take it. So I want my inheritance. He said, you can have it. That's literally what he said, you can have it. See, because once the woman is invited, you know, okay, all this come. You got to raise seed to her, in her, for the dead name, whichever of the two boys she was married to. He says, no, nah, that's going to mess up the rule on my inheritance. He says, I don't want it. That's it. Now this, he says, I can't. Now this was a manner in former times, you see, in Israel, concerning redeeming and concerning changing. So look at look at look how everybody this is a good family. They all on the same page. Yeah, we not gonna be able to do that. 
For to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor. And this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. Look at that. This is just a good family, man. They follow the law. And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, Your witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilion's and Maon's of the hand of them. He said, I bought the whole thing. It's all mine now. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malon. Now, there we find that's the boy she married. Malon, have I purchased to be my wife? Watch that. That doesn't mean she's property or a slave. That is an endowment. People do that to this day. You know that's endowments done to this day? That don't make her no slave. She can still divorce it. To raise up the name of the dead. So he's going to raise children to Malon. So they're going to have Malon's name. Because he says we're kinsmen. And I'm going to raise up seed to him. Because he's following what the Bible said. Upon his inheritance. That the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren. And from the gate of his place, you all went to say, man, it's a good dude. This dude is saying, look here, man, I know the kid's going to have his name, but I'm good, man. That's a good woman, and he's my family. This is how you're supposed to treat your family, brother, as a righteous person. It overrides the traditions of the doggy dog mentality in the world. You have to look out for your family. You should be praying for your family. As for proud they're ill, uh, you should be looking out that they are making it in life. If that's something you can do to assist, you do. Because they're your kinfolk. And if you don't have this mentality, you're definitely not going to look out for saints. That's what we talked about in the other lesson. To help you understand is that you must know who your family physically is so you can transfer that love to your spiritual family who look different and are from different places. If you don't have the physical right, you never get the spirit. How do we know that? The Lord said, how can you not love your brother who you see and love me who you can't see? You're not going to change how God teaches. Physical first, spiritual next. Adam, physical, Christ, spirit. You're not going to change how he teaches. And you can't out-teach him. So you have to get down that family love and understand that so you can transfer it to the spiritual. Because that's what's wrong in the church. People don't even love their own family. How are they going to love somebody not kidding them physically? Only spirit. Well, we're waiting on that heaven, but you're on the land now, so you should be able to remember. And this guy and his family, they are in tune with remembering family. And again, uh, verse 11, and all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that is coming to thine house like Rachel. Look at this. And like Leah, tie her in with the righteous, which too did build the house of Israel and do Thou worthily in Ephrata and be famous in Bethlehem. Look at that. See, because that's the two women. He, he, had, he got Rachel, Leah first, then Rachel, you know, was agreed upon. Laban was running game down on Jacob. And then and he had the handmaids too. But the idea is they pulled out these two. They tied in the Moabites with that level because of why? Virtuous. What are you saying, Ozan? They're virtuous women outside. Of the Lord's church. Yes you find one. And then they will come among the saints. But you're going to find them. As they come among the saints. But they come from a different belief system. And they want to be among the saints. They're going to be just as virtuous. As the right. Look at the names. And Leah and Rachel. My goodness. So this is understood. So the righteousness is what you're looking for. In a person. Not per se. It has to be their race. Not per se, have to be already a member of the church. What type of righteousness is in them? Are they willing to submit and understand and at least go to church? Are they willing to go to church and hear about the Lord and come among the righteous? I mean, that's, that says, speaks volumes. Verse 12, and let thine house be like the house of Perez. Look at the names. And Tamar, bound to Judah of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. Man, look at that. They are laying it down. Man, we want your house to be blessed like the people in the Bible. Boy, this is some good holy folks here. Praise God. Verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife, and he went in unto her. Notice that term. I remember that. Went in unto her. Talks about having the type of sexual relationship that brings a child. 
not just having sex with each other. The type of sexual contact that brings a child. Your brethren want to make that the only form of sex. That's a lie. That's when you want to have a baby. If you want to have a baby, there are other forms of sex. Any one of them is immoral if you're not married. Y'all got that? Y'all watch these crooked preachers in the church of Christ. And I mean just like I said it. And he says, so Bastard Ruth went out unto her. The Lord gave her conception and she bare a son. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, not she said Naomi, which had not left this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. That's going to be for Malon. Because he died before he could have a kid. The theme was, don't do that, they said that about Jesus. Who would declare his posterity if he's dead? Because we're the children born to the bride, the church, come out, and that's what the Bible said. Who would declare? Because he definitely have a physical wife. That's how, because God not going to let his son die and not have seed. You got to understand who you're part of. You got to understand you come. That's why Jesus said, all thine are mine, and all mine are thine. It's two different people in that conversation, the father and the son. It's ridiculous, man, for somebody to blaspheme. That's all right. That's why hell is hot. It got to stay hot, too. And so he says, uh, verse 15, And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nurse, talking about Naomi now, and a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons. I kept telling you, it's going to be said, she's better than seven sons. That's number of completion had borne him. This is a Moabite. But everybody don't mind. Now, this is a good woman. Yeah, man, this is a good woman here. She been with Naomi the whole time. Came back. She won't be among us. It is a blessing when people want to be among your people that are not your people. You need to appreciate that and respect that and say, man, praise God. We must be doing something right in life. Something right in life. So that's how you want to look at life. And so he says, uh, as the story is written, and Naomi took the child and laid it up in her bosom and became nurse unto it. Look at verse 17. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name saying, there is a son born to Naomi. Look at that. See, because they said, man, it's just like you had a baby, Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse. The father of that. Did y'all see that? Man, God is so good. That's why David's daddy come through this lineage and he come. This is powerful from a Moabite. Because what? She's righteous. She wants to be among the righteous. But she's still a Moabite. That's why we don't concern ourselves with race in the Lord Church. That's why. But you got to be right. You got to be righteous. Oh, you just all the same race and a bunch of crooks, it means nothing to God. So verse 18. Now these are the generation of Perez. Perez begat Hezron, and Hezron begat Ram, and Ram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nashon, and Nashon begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz, and Boaz begat Obed, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat Day. Boaz, but tell you what, man, here, the Bible is doing something to the Holy Ghost letting you know, man, I'm gonna tell y'all how it is. Straight up more bite. Rahab the harlot is also going to be included in the lineage that leads to Christ through Joseph, obviously, because they have no connection between Christ and Joseph. None. There's no blood. And no, don't point to Mary. It's not with her either. So the thing you and I want to understand, brethren, is the, the, the reason we dealt with this story, and it is complete, because we wanted to show we had several different segments, and then the last three were dealing with Naomi and Ruth because of the connection to the son. Malon and Chilion are good dudes. She marries Malon. Malon's a good dude. But he knew this is a good woman. His judgment is good. This is a good woman here, man. I want to marry her. Naomi and Elimelech didn't flip out. And that's forbidden. They obviously met, talking. Oh, yeah, she's a good woman, man. She's so good, she proved, man, I'm going to stick past his death, past the son's death. I'm going back to your people. I'm going to even worship your God. This is beautiful. And so that's the first thing Boaz tells us. You've come under the wings of the Lord. I heard about you. But he's shocked. 
Man, I thought you would have picked a young dude, rich or poor. He said, the louder is better. You blessing at the end. Man, you won't marry me. Hold on, another dude, though. He closer. So we got to go. Let me go fix. And Naomi know he's going to get it done today. If it can happen, he's going to get it done today because he knows. This is incredible. So what if the other women, the other maids go like, I can't believe he picked them up. And well, who, who are you? And who are you? Thank you. You don't tell nobody who to pick. The man picks a more bite, and that's it. But she's a good woman and virtuous. So we appreciate the Lord telling us this story. The understanding is, as we wrap up, brethren, Boaz uses wisdom in the law of Moses to represent a case of the near kinsman as well as it can be done. The near kinsman knows I cannot accept the blessing of the inheritance if I lose my own personal inheritance. Because he lets you know yeah, it's going to be it's going to be the whole package. Ruth coming with it. All, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to do that. We must follow Christianity and leave the philosophy of men. Boaz knows the child will have the name of Ruth's dead husband, Malon. However, he loves Ruth and wants to honor her dead husband who is near him. He says that. We need more men like a people, period, like Boaz, that will not forget God's law as they speak publicly and privately. We need more people like Ruth who will lead a tradition of marrying the same race or religion or national origin, separate apart from rather being in love with who you have chosen to marry. We need more people like Naomi who understands the children, the, the need of her husband for women, the need of a husband for women, with or without children, because both examples are shown in the story. You have to understand is, it's about do you love you. That's the only thing going to hold you together. Love. There's no commandment going to make you stay. If you stay for a commandment, you end up in somebody's bed. And it's not going to be your spouse. It's going to be because I L-O-V-E you, period. That's the way it's going to be. That's the only thing going to hold you together. And God's not going to make nobody stay. So we have to understand that. So we need people who understand the laws of God and understand it's about love, not length of courtship. However, an acceptance of love given to each other given to each other through adoration, respect, and acceptance of each other as is. Look at the scenarios I'm going to draw before we wrap up. She is young. He is old. We kill her age. She is poor. He is rich. We kill the status. She is his servant. He is a boss. We kill boss employee relationship is bad. We kill that. I love this story. Praise Jesus. She is of the race of Moab. He is of the race of Hebrew. We just kill race. You know, when God put a story together, he going to knock out every lie we got in our heart. Every lie on the planet. God can put a story together. And it happened. He just lets it happen. That's the important thing. She came from idolatry. He is of Jehovah God. Look at that. However, Ruth is subdued into the faith of God. Naomi is blessed to serve as a nurse of the child. We serve an awesome God. Let us remember, these are the ancestors of Jesus Christ. God is not ashamed of them. And they are in that ancestor. He's not ashamed. Not at all. Praise the name of God. Let us remember this, brother, and let us continue to understand some things. Here some points, a couple more bullet points. Let us remember this clearly. If you have sex before marriage, you got to ask yourself, why? You don't trust love? God is love. I want to try hot. What's wrong with you? Sin, that's what's wrong. They have connected and are well pleased with what they know about each other. Ruth and Boaz. There's a lot of talk about dating. However, few speak of the actual love connection of two souls. Either you have it or you don't. Period. They trust God will enable them to please each other. That's the trust they got. Key word, trust. God has given all people a disability who seek marriage, no matter whether you're a member of the church or not. You don't gain each other's trust and love in marriage by length of days. Let me repeat that. You don't gain each other's trust and love in marriage by length of days. People change on you like a hot cake getting flipped. They'll pick somebody else in a minute and burn out on you. That's not what it's about. You simply give them the trust 
Love you hope to receive back. Somebody got to deposit first. Boaz assumed because Ruth is young to be his daughter. She's young to be his daughter. She would pick a younger man. He never makes a move. He just assumes she don't want a young man. He says it. I thought that he was going to pick. As the other maidens that usually did work for him. However, he was wrong. A, a understanding of men that exist is to marry someone your age and around your age. That's an understanding of people. You know how many people that don't work for? People, you, you hear people who have theories that go like, you know, you got to listen to the same music. What does that have to do with it? Well, how you be around entertainment? Who say you're going to have to have music entertain each other? That's so ridiculous. What does that have to do with love? A person has to understand that's what that's how the mind thinks. And you be around the same age, you know, uh, you know, so you can relate. Who said people at the same age relate? People at the same age can't even relate to each other. It's about what's in you. How do you think? Whether you're a Christian or not, it's how do you think? What's your image toward life and how people should be treated, how love should be displayed. This is where the problem is at. They got that part down. There's nobody forcing them to marry. The dude already said you could have picked a young or old man. Rich. He already acknowledging. Wow. You could have picked anybody else, but you pick an old dude, but you could have picked young, rich or poor. It's like, you know, but he doesn't go, baby, I'm too old for you. <laughs> he go, man, I'm going to handle this. I'm going to handle this. All right. Let me, I will take care of it today. This is important, bro. You got when you're, when you're dating and, and this message is taught and, and I select these messages frequently. To talk to the single people that want to get mad. Single people contemplating. This is a full service church. We don't just teach no family and marriage. Man, we got to teach everybody. And so we have to understand that. And so dating, this must be in the mind if you are into dating. Whether you're a member of the church or not. And so he, he understands this. He's wrong about the thought. People think we all get old around the same age in the same way. That's just a thought. People think when they hit 70, I've had people say, physicians, people in medicine, I've, had, I've seen it in their writings online. Have you ever seen someone 75 years old? They say that they're right. I don't know if I want to reach that old because they deal with broken down body. Everybody body don't get broke down as they age. I'm sorry to tell you that. Moses' strip was not abating. You may say, well, that was Moses. Caleb goes to war at 85 to whoop the giants that he was ready to whoop when he was young. Go figure. You have to understand that Joshua lives over 100 years, I think like 120 something plus. Your, your, that's not the age of Adam and them. <laughs> Way past that time frame. Jehoiada lives to be 130 plus years old. He's a priest with two wives. Way after David and them. You, your mind has to understand something, brethren. Don't get caught in traditionalism. Stick with righteousness. Things that are right. Everybody doesn't roll around in a wheelchair. I want to let you know that, okay? All right. Just remember that. Everybody's back doesn't bow. Got it? Everybody doesn't lose their desire for the opposite sex as they get old. You got to get your mind right. Because if you get yourself hooked to the wrong thought, you'll be picking the very wrong person to marry. I'm just telling you now. That stuff about cougar and all that. Now, man, I don't listen to that trash. You pick the person you love within a range of age where it is where you can comprehend and talk. And that's it. This man is old enough to be her dad. However old that is. And there's no problem. No problem. He just said, I'm shocked that you do that. Some people, if a young person come towards them that's young to be, they mess down and say, baby, you know, I would love to do that to be able to date you, but I won't, you are too old. Go. You go down the street. Because you, you, your, your mouth already took. Go. You, if there was a blessing, you missed it. Too bad. Because your mind is in traditionalism. You know, I, you know I'm, I'm 44 and she's 26. Man, go ahead now. You go ahead. When you get a 44 year old and they dog you out, don't say nothing to nobody. And you just cry at the church as a box of tissue. And most churches cry, get it and wipe your eyes and go home and eat ice cream. Because you missed your blessing. What people say, 
Are you marrying people or are you marrying that person? That's what's wrong with her. That's why I want to teach it. Traditionalism, man, you want to mess your life up. I'm not saying marry somebody in a nursing home. I'm talking about somebody you looking at the age is a pretty good size gap here. So what? Do you relate? Can you talk? Can you love each other? Okay, you're good to go. You're good to go. And when your family is saying, baby, he's too old for you. Say, well, you know, uh, you know we're really ready. Everything looks pretty good. But you're saying, look, now I ain't tell y'all who to marry, but I love y'all. So don't tell me to marry. If it blow up on you, it could blow up on you. If you marry somebody, and y'all twin age, born the same month and the same day. You don't control that. The point is, do you love them and it's over? Somebody going to deposit love first and receive to get it back? Game done. Let's get a couple of more thoughts and we're through. People, as he said, don't get old, uh, out of shape at the same age where they can't move. And we, all, we do not all die around the same age. Do not be putting on David back that he said everybody die around 70. Hey, he didn't say that. He told you, I'm looking at how people die. I see around those age frames. Right? By strength, just natural strength, people kind of live longer. Past his lifetime, you got the priest 135, at least 130 plus. I can't remember the exact age. Jehoiada, you can look up 130 plus. So David's not wrong. It's just he didn't say nobody lives past that age. So people don't die around the same age. Sometimes people get married. They think, you know, if you marry somebody 60 and you're 40, they're going to die. I saw a young guy, an old guy, bury his young wife after they were married about 20 years. She just died. Poor woman, bless her. She was a good Christian woman. He buried her. And then he went married another woman because he didn't believe in living foul. He's a member of the church. I thought he was a preacher. But poor woman, God bless her memory, she passed. So don't, don't think like that. Get that out. That's a tradition that can mess your life. Your life as you're dating and life needs to understand a matter for love. For love. Period. A few years of joy. Watch this are better than many years of sorrow. You answer yourself. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. And wrap up here. Verse number 3. Paul says, For I deliver you first, I deliver you first of all that which also I receive, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. They was buried third day rose again according to the Scripture. Let's see what Jesus has to say about this. Mark 16 and verse number 15. Here's the instruction. Go you into all the world and preach the gospel of good news to every creature. He that believe in baptized shall be saved. He that believe not shall be damned. Look at Acts chapter 2 and verse 36. Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made that same Jesus whom you were crucified. Both Lord and Christ. I mean, they heard this. They were pricked in their heart. said to Peter to rest their past. Me and the brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins, and what is the gift? You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise unto you and to your children, and all that are fought, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And many other words that he testified is all saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly receive his word were baptized. And the same day they were added to them about 3,000 souls. They continued steadfast in the apostle doctrine, fellowship, breaking the bread, and in prayers. Acts 2 47. Praising God and having faith with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Look at Acts 8 35. Then Philip opened his mouth. Because the eunuch doesn't know the answer to Isaiah 53, what we've labeled as Isaiah 53. And they got that same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. As they went on the way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here's water. What did the hinder me to be baptized? Philip said, if thou believe with all thine heart, thou mayest. He answered it and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The gospel preaches itself. He commanded the child to stand still. They went down both to the water by Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. You hearing all the nonsense teaching and other false church and even some church of Christ about you not be baptized be saved is nonsense and God will punish you eternally in hell for disrespecting his teaching about salvation we need to accept that who actually does the baptism first Corinthians 12 and verse 13 but by one spirit are we all baptized in one body What's the body? The church. Colossians 1.18 will we be Jews or Gentiles will we be bond or free and have all been made to drink into one spirit look at if you will the hope of this baptism, 1 Peter 3, 21. The like figure one to even baptisms is also now saved us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience taught God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone in heaven on the right hand of God, angels, authorities, and powers being made subject unto him. Look at Revelation 2, 10. Here's the hope of the saint. Fill none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. 
that you may be tried. You shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I, personal pronoun, Jesus promising, will give thee a crown of life. Speaking of himself. You say, well, I've been baptized, preacher. I'm good. Well, let's see. Acts 19.1. Are you a member of the Church of Christ? Then you're not saved. Acts 19, when it came to pass, that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have received the Holy Ghost since you believe. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? They said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John truly baptized the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. The importance of understanding, brethren, is that you have to be baptized into the church of Christ. When, if you were a member of the church in the wilderness, the Jewish church, on the day of Pentecost, you're already in the church. But you have to be baptized into the new church, which is the church of Christ. And Peter said that, and we just read that. There is no exception to the rule. You must do this. Hope you can understand that and believe that and embrace that with your heart. I want to encourage you to continue. Be pro-life. Your life. The lives of others. Preserve life. Promote life. Teach which brings eternal life to your soul as well. Why would you die and not live? Why would you destroy yourself trying to add or take away from God's word? Live and enjoy your life, but live your life in Christ. And do not walk in sin. Come now together we stand and sing.